If you are going to start game development this year, then I want to pass you on some advice because I've been doing this now for almost 10 years and my current project is two years on. I just wanted to share with you all the things I've picked up along the way from what engine's good to use and how to get started in this whole game development world that is fun, exhilarating. A lot of people start in game development with the thought process of what language am I going to code in? What game engine am I going to use? Well, if I was going to do it again, I would start a little bit differently. I think it's important for most new game developers to understand what kind of studio they actually are, what where they want to end up with their game development because that helps you decide where to go and what to learn. So for example, if I wanted to be a mobile game developer, I would use a particular engine. Even if I was going to build an MMO game, I would use a different type of engine. Where where do you fit into all this? It's, it's pretty complicated. So finding what it is that you want to build and kind of build on from there, that's a good place to start. After you work out what you are going to build, what types of games you're going to build. I, I think one really good thing that people can do is go and play some games that are like that. When you start playing some games that are like that, especially the indie games that are, that are like the games you want to build, you'll start noticing what game engine those developers used, how those game developers made those particular games. At the moment, we, we are making a game that's a 3D top-down puzzle platforming kind of game. We got inspiration from games like The Witness and Sackboy's Adventures. So while this was a good place for us to start, we we had to work out what engine we were going to use. We just I, I've been using Unity for a long time now. I like Unity because it's a physics type engine. If, you, if you're into physics and that type of thing, puzzles, games, pretty much are all can involve a lot of physics, then Unity's a really good place to start. I would say though, you have to probably do your own due diligence into how much the game engine could potentially cost you by ch choosing a particular engine. So there are the three engines, there's Unity, there's Unreal and there, there is Godot. If I was going to be interested in 2D games, I would be going towards Godot or Unity. They both are a little bit similar in that you can use C Sharp to program in both of these game engines. Unity's probably got a lot more things that you can do with it, but that can be confusing where Godot strips it all down and it's you're probably spending a little bit more time coding where Unity, you, you might be able to drop some prefabs in to help you out a bit more. And then there's 3D, Unity and Unreal. Godot, it's starting to get into the 3D world. The problem with Unreal is that you have to go and learn C++, which isn't compatible with the other two game engines. However, in Unreal, you can use blueprints, which you basically make nodes and you join them up and it's coding without coding, so to speak. It can be a, a really good way to learn coding as well by doing that. Unity has a system like this as well, but it's not nearly as well thought out as Blueprints. So it's it's getting there, it's definitely getting there. And, and you can kind of see why I chose Unity because it's kind of the middle ground between Godot and Unreal. Unreal has got some really good features when you want to go to massive multiplayer games. I wouldn't even consider that in Unity. I don't think Unity is as well equipped to deal with that as Unreal is. That's where Unreal really shines in these MMO type games. Hence why they have Fortnite. So then if you've chosen your engine based on what kind of games you're going to build, you've got to work out how you're going to do the art in that game. and. This is way more important than learning how to code at this point in time. We spent a, a year building our game and putting some art styles into our game that really didn't work. And if we'd spent more time at the start of our build 
thinking about how the art was going to be in the game, it would have saved us a whole lot more time. A lot of people start coding a game, start building a game, start doing all these things, and then they go, oh, we'll slap some art in there. And that's a really big mistake because you are not going to have a clear design path going forward. You're not going to know what should be going into the game and should not be going into the game. It kind of, you go, oh, I like this, but I don't like this. And it, it, yeah, you can, I guess you can change it as you're going, but it's definitely more important to have an idea of what art you're going to have when you start. And also very importantly, if you can achieve that art, because when we started building our game, I mentioned before that we were interested in games like Sackboy's Adventure. Now we could not achieve that art on our team. It's, it was just impossible for us to get that good of an art style for our game. So I think it's important to get started on working out how you're going to manufacture your art before going into your game build. So learning things like Blender, if you're going to go down the 3D path, if you're going to 2D, A Sprite is great for pixel art, or I like vector programs. I always say Affinity Designer. I love doing some vector art. The other thing is once you get your art made, you can pop it into your selected game engine and you can go ahead and see if it looks good you don't have to have the characters moving you don't have to have anything like that working yet to see if it's going to be good you you just have to put it in the scene see if the lighting works see how things work because a lot of the times you you can put things into the scene and the lighting may not really work with that or you might need to use a different render pipeline to achieve the look that you're trying to get add some parts into a game, make a little mock-up scene and, and see what you think. It's definitely going to get you in the right direction. So you've got your engine, you've got your artwork, you've got to start playing around with your mechanics. You can do this at the same time you're doing your artwork if you want to. You can muck around with some artwork and see if it works with your mechanic. Having some fun mechanics is important. Like That's what makes a game really good. For me, Finding the good mechanics that I want to do, I will go and play some other games and that have similar mechanics to what I've got and see what I do and I don't like about how they've implemented those mechanics into their game. That's a really good point for getting started with finding mechanics. A lot of game developers don't go back and play these old games that they got inspiration from whilst they're in development. They, they get into development and then forget all about the games that inspired their journey to become a game developer. Go back, play them. There's definitely things you don't like about it and there's definitely things you love about it. And then comes down to level design. And, and I hope you guys are taking notes all the way through this. You Well, not, not of me, but uh, if you of your game development process. You, you want to be writing down a lot of documents of what could help you in this journey. Things that you're gonna come back to later on, reference points that will definitely help you make the best game and start your game development path. Level design. One thing I don't ever see people mentioning is that I love to go into things like Minecraft and you, you can build out a level there and you can see if it works as a level. You can play around with it, you can move some blocks. It's sometimes quicker to build a level in a game that's already existing than going ahead and trying to design it on paper. Like I'll draw it out on paper and then I'll go to play it and it's terrible. But if, if I've spent all this time building the level with Blender and stuff, something like that, and then it doesn't work and it's completely useless, I've wasted a lot more time than if I've spent half an hour playing Minecraft, for example, designing a level. Level design, you can, you can use other things besides actually just getting in and building a level. Having all these things in place is really going to help you get your game on track and help you find the path that helps you create the game that you're get, trying to build. I hope there's more of you guys getting into game development this year and please like, subscribe the video so I can keep sharing what I know about game development. Also check out Light Haze World and I'll talk to you guys another day. Thank you for watching.